so I know that this looks bad. Like, I understand. This looks pretty bad. However, it is so much worse than it looks. This pile, and there's more off camera by the way, this pile is the pile that came from the place where I don't keep my costumes. Like just this random closet because I needed more storage. This was overflow. This is the overflow. This is the stuff that didn't fit in the first location. So anyway, I've been watching a lot of Marie Kondo on Netflix and she has a show, it's called The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. And my life has already been changed because now I have a huge mess in my parlor to clean up and I don't know what to do about it and I am already filled with regret. So, hi guys, Ivy here. How do you feel about this big mess? It's your napping spot? So I think I understand why Marie Kondo tells you to physically like take it out of your drawers and closets and put it all in one place. And it's because I think it is absolutely shocking how much stuff I have accumulated over the past like five or six years of being a costumer. I think the reason that I struggle so much with getting rid of my costumes is because Number one, I feel like I put so much time and work into these things that it's not just like by accidentally buying an ugly shirt at the store and then you get rid of it in six months. It's like, you know, I put a lot of myself into these projects. So I think it's hard to just like throw your work away at the thrift store. And I also worry that if I do just donate all of this stuff to a thrift store that it won't really like be appreciated for what it is. And I think there might even be people who would like to own some of this stuff. So I think what I'm going to try and do is sell at least some of it and then whatever doesn't sell I might just give away or take to the thrift store or whatever. So I guess let's get started. Um, this is an 1885 bustle jacket. Um, it goes to a skirt which is not currently present. It's actually pretty well made for what it is. Normally my stuff is not necessarily super well made, but this is pretty nice. Um, I think I might hang on to this because I have been planning a series where I want to do like an all black ensemble from like every era that I costume for. And I already have the bustle era, I have an 18th century gown and I'm planning an 1890s. So I think I'm going to hang on to this because I do actually wear it a surprising amount. Hopefully I'll be able to find the rest of that. Um, okay, this ensemble is probably one of my least favorite things that I have hanging around. This one's definitely going to get the axe. It was meant to be a skating bustle, um, and then that meetup ended up getting canceled. I don't like the fit. I had problems with the seams on the sides, like splitting, so like there's some awkward seaming going on. It like doesn't look that great. It's like clearly splitting a little bit like that, and I mean it's probably could be cleaned up if you have some basic sewing skills, but I don't think I ever liked it enough to want to put the effort into cleaning it up. So I will let this go on Etsy for like nothing. Like I'll put a really low price on this and hopefully someone wants it. Up next, this I think is actually made out of the same fabric as that skating bustle. Um, I made this in a day at the last minute for a Christmas Regency event and I don't wear Regency stuff. I will never wear this again. I don't know why I made it in the first place, so this is definitely gonna go. Up next is this uh, pink 1830s kind of um, dress. I think when I made it, my theory was that if I ever get invited to an 1830s thing, I will have something that can be dressed for both summer and winter. But I did not a very good job on this. It's very much like costume quality rather than clothing quality. Um, so I think for sure I'm going to let this go, and then if I ever get invited to anything 1830s again, I am going to say no, because I don't like the 1830s and I should never have made this in the first place. It also has this cape, which is actually kind of legit. Um, I don't know, the cape's a little shuddy. The cape does match the dress, so I guess I'll let them go together. Although the cape is honestly pretty cute. Up next is definitely another thing from about that same time period. I think this is 1830s or 1840s. Um, initially when I made this, it was full length, like it was the right length. Um, and then I put it on and I hated it and I didn't think it looked very good. So I cut it off thinking like at least the bodice is super cute and I can like wear 
the bodice and as a as like a sundress like in a normal everyday setting and the bodice just feels way too fancy and I have never actually worn this anywhere so if you're interested in some fun history bounding for the 1830s and 40s um, I got you that one's definitely gonna get the chop oh this dress I have such a soft spot for this dress because I think it is just it's totally super beautiful um, I went through like a little Dior petal phase um, and I have I think three different pieces that are all um, Dior petal themed. I have um, an 18th century sack gown, which you'll see. I have a pink cocktail dress, and then I have this blue petal dress. Um, it's beautiful. I actually really love this. And Marie Kondo says like if it sparks joy, you should keep it. I think my problem with this is that it is unwearable. I like it's it's mid-century, so it's a dress that makes sense for like the 1950s but it's a ball gown and you just don't get invited to very many events where it makes sense to be wearing a ball gown, but it's also not a historical costume themed. This one's, uh, I really wanna keep it, but I know I should let it go because it's such a weird piece and I think I'll never, I'll never really end up wearing it. I don't know why I took this out of the closet. I guess it's because Marie Kondo tells you that you have to, but I know for sure I'm keeping this. Um, I've been working a lot on history bounding type stuff lately. I wear this skirt all the time. I love it. So I'm definitely keeping this. Um, these were something that got made for one of my other videos, which was a pattern hacking demonstration. They are super cute, but they are not my color. I do not wear anything in this color palette. I'm strictly like a, an earth tone person. So again, another thing that probably never should have gotten made. So these are definitely going to go. And like I said, I'm gonna, I intend to let a lot of this stuff go really cheaply. So if you have some basic sewing skills and you know you can fix some minor problems like missing buttons and stuff, um, I think that you might be able to score a good deal on something if this is the kind of thing that you like. Um, this one I'm a little torn about. Um, I have never worn this anywhere, which is so sad because I was absolutely in love with it when I made it. I think it was last summer and I kind of wanted to make one more really summery look before it was time for me to um, go back to school since I'm a teacher. Um, I think the problem with this though is that it doesn't close at the front. I'm not sure anyone would really be able to do much with it. I, I ended up putting some hook and eyes, but still it ends up gaping and it doesn't look that great. And I don't think I have... Yeah, I don't think I have any fabric to make a placket for it, which actually would probably have been the answer. Um, I don't know. I'm really torn about this yellow one. What do you think? I'm going to put this in my maybe pile. I'm going to try not to do that too much because I know that's like not what you're supposed to do. But I really love it, and it's never been worn, and it's so cute. It's so sunshiny. I'm going to hang on to this for now. Uh, this is definitely one of the more like fun, weird things that I have in my costume closet. Um, I made this for a light parade and you can see that it actually does light up and I have a tutorial on the technique for how to put, um, how to install LED lights into a velvet dress like this. Um, and it's really cool. It's an awesome dress. The unfortunate thing is several of the strings have like been destroyed or like gone out. So they're not really replaceable because, um, it's glue unfortunately is how they're fixed in here. Um, I tried sewing them in at first, but number one, it took forever and it was causing a lot of weird puckering. Um, so they're glued in. So I'd have to literally like tear them out of the dress to replace them. And at that point, I'm not sure it's really worth it. All right, next we have this, which is an unfinished project that is um, uh, for the Stripey Challenge that's hosted by Carolina Zabrowska. So I'm gonna, definitely gonna hang on to this and finish the bottom half of it just for that one challenge. And then to be honest, I wish that I had chosen something else for this challenge because this is another thing that should probably never have gotten made because I don't normally wear a ton of black and I especially don't wear black and white. So once this is made, it will probably just go up for sale because I don't want it. Um, after that, we have this um, was made. Why did I make this? I don't even remember. I think I was going through my 18th century phase and um, I didn't realize quite yet that I don't really love making like women's workwear. It's not something that I ever really wear. Uh, but this is a, an outfit that's actually based on the Chocolate Girl, which is a Dutch painting. Um, and I think this skirt should probably just get donated. It's 
polyester, it's not hemmed very well, the whole thing is a little bit sad. So I'm probably just gonna donate that to a regular thrift store and hopefully someone will find a use for it. Uh, but the, the jacket is actually pretty nice if you're into that kind of thing. I think it's reasonably well made, it's fully lined. So this is probably my favorite Regency outfit. Uh, Regency is not really my era, but there tend to be a lot of events for Regency. So I'm definitely gonna hang on to this, not because I love it, but because I think it'll come in handy and it'll prevent me from making yet more clothing that I don't really love that much. So I think I'm for sure gonna hang on to this and I'm, I'll probably get some use out of it. Um, oh, I love this one, okay. So um, I had been wanting to make a, um, a league of their own uniform like forever and ever and ever and I finally got around to it uh, but I didn't want to just make one of the costumes from the movie so instead I based it on my home team which is the Seattle Mariners and even though this is probably one of like my least popular things on like Instagram and stuff. It's one of my all time favorite costumes. I love it. I'm so glad that I own this. Um, it was surprisingly expensive to make because these patches are like crazy expensive and there's so many on the, on the uniform. So I'm definitely gonna hang on to this because it's one of my favorite costumes of all time. Um, these are some 1890 cycling trousers. I get a surprising amount of use out of these so I'm gonna hang on to those for sure. This one is a kind of like gothy um, Edwardian. I think the only reason I made this is because I got an absolutely insanely good deal on the fabric. I think that they were phasing it out and it cost like $3 a yard. I could not say no to that. Um, another problem of overconsumption, it was on sale. I could not stop myself, except I definitely could have and probably should have. Uh, my instinct is to let this go because I don't know that I'll wear it that much because it's meant to be like a gothic summer look and that's like not really my style. I may end up hanging on to this because like I said, I kind of want a black ensemble from like every era that I tend to do costuming for. So I think for now, I'm gonna keep it. Although I think at some point it'll probably end up going. It's pretty well made. I had trouble with the collar, but other than that, it's not terrible. Um, I don't even need to look at this. Um, I hated it when I made it and I hate it now. It is an 18th century jacket. Um, I'm a little torn about this one. Um, this is one of my weirdest quarantine projects. I ended up making this um, as a cosplay of my house. So this entire ensemble is suitable for 1906, which is the year that the house I'm living in now was built. Um, and my house is gray with a red door. Um, the cosplay really doesn't look anything like the house. It was just like a, a way to be a little bit inspired. I'm not sure I see myself wearing it ever. I think the jacket and skirt both came out really well. I think the blouse like is awkward and it's like the blouse is very bulky. So I think if I end up selling this, you probably would have to make a different blouse for it because this one did not come out that great. The jacket and the skirt are nice though. This is, I think, an 18th century linen apron. I have a feeling it'll come in handy. I cannot honestly hold this and say that it sparks joy for me, but I would hate to have to make it again. So I will hang on to that. Oh, hey, this is the other half of that black jacket that I was looking for earlier. Found it. The piles are starting to get further and further away from where I'm sitting. I feel like that's kind of a good sign. Um, this was my first ever, um, no, that's not true. This was my second soutache pro project that I ever made. Um, it's pretty rough around the edges, I hate to say it, but the soutache is not finished well. The jacket never fit that great. The sleeves are like kind of cut into your arm. So if you are a much smaller person than I am and you don't mind some slightly messy soutache in the back, I think I'm probably gonna let this go. Um, next, I feel like I need to deal with this like crazy teal ball gown. Um, this dress I, is so inexplicable for me. I think it's beautiful and the color is perfect and the pleats are beautiful. Um, the fit on the bodice was never super great, unfortunately. So I told myself that I would remake the bodice if I ever had a ball to wear this to. But I think the honest truth is that if I ever do get invited to an 1880s ball, I would wanna make something totally different for it. I'm definitely letting this go. Invite me to an 1880s ball so I have a chance to make something that I actually really like. This was another demo piece for my um, pattern hacking video. I think it's pretty nicely made. The edges are finished in a modern way. I don't really do historically accurate sewing techniques necessarily. I think I'm gonna let this go because I really don't see myself wearing it. 
Ah, uh, yes. My very, very, very first Victorian ensemble. Weirdly, this one tends to be popular online. I don't think it's super well made. So I'm for sure letting this go just because I love the color scheme and I want to do it again, but the second time I want to do it justice and really do something special with this color scheme. So I'll be letting this go pretty inexpensively because it was not made very well. It has a lot of problems on the inside. And I think someone might appreciate it for what it is, which is a costume that looks good from the outside. So um, it definitely needs new buttons. I put these pink ones on and they were popping off all over the place. So um, if you buy this, you need some basic sewing skills to deal with that. Uh, uh, why did I do this to myself? I could have just like been a hoarder in peace and just like wallowed in all of my material goods. Like why did I have to admit to the world that I had this problem? Never again. All right, up next we have some cellophane fairy wings, which I do think come in pretty handy. So I'm definitely gonna hang on to these wings because I know I'll use them again. This dress is way heavier than I remember. This dress actually has a matching lion mask to go with it. You can see that it's got some three-dimensional lions on the bottom. I wore this dress to Venetian Carnival in actual real Venice. So even though I don't necessarily see myself uh, wearing this again, it's just such a special piece that I know I'll probably never get rid of it. So I'm for sure keeping this one. Um, I really like that it's three-dimensional at the bottom. I think that that's a cool feature. Oh, heavy, heavy. Uh, this one's kind of cool. This is like a fairy flower costume. Um, weirdly, I think it probably will have some application in the future. I don't know if I love it enough to keep it, but I don't think it's well made enough to sell necessarily. So, I mean, maybe donation is the answer to this problem. Um, this is probably going straight to the donate bin. This is like some solid Goodwill Renaissance Fair costume right here. Um, this is one of those, uh, random dresses that comes in surprisingly handy. I'm a super duper fall person and somewhere, somehow there are some matching maple leaf fairy wings to go with this dress. And I really love it. I love oh, this one. <laughs> Uh, back before ye old plague, I have worn this to Halloween in my classroom a couple of times. It is the perfect like Halloween fancy dress that is not like literally just a costume. Um, wow, does this look familiar? <laughs> this is the skirt that I'm wearing now in a much less wearable length. After I made this, I decided I loved it so much that I made another one that was a little bit shorter so it's easier to wear. I love this, I'm for sure keeping it. I have learned so much since I made this that I don't know if I feel good about wearing it knowing I could do so much better a job now. I think this one's going in my maybe pile. I just don't know. I love it. It's so cute. This is one of my few later Edwardian dresses. Um, it does not photograph well, unfortunately. I always struggle with the green and I have had a hell of a time trying to take good pictures of it. Uh, but it definitely fills a hole in my wardrobe and I love it. So I'm definitely going to hang on to this one. Oh wow, look, more Regency crop that I will definitely for sure never wear. Um, this is a little tough. I don't know why I don't love this outfit, but I kind of just don't. So I shall be left with exactly nothing that's suitable for the seaside. But also, it's October. I have a whole year to figure out what I want to do and wear the next time I get invited to the seaside, because I'm gonna get rid of this for sure. It might be time to address the elephant in the room, or the octopus in the room. <laughs> I'm just sitting in an empty room, laughing at my own jokes. Let's talk about this octopus. Um, ugh, this is just absolutely a marvel of engineering and fabric manipulation. Even though it's huge, even though it's unwieldy, I have a surprising amount of application for this. Whenever I get invited to a Halloween party that I don't know what to wear to, this one is always like a total showstopper and I love this outfit. So even though it's enormous and I should probably just throw it away because it takes up so much space, I do really love this octopus. All right, 
Um, Sunny decided to join us for this rather sudden transition. So I'm definitely planning on listing all of these items on Etsy that I decided that I was getting rid of, but that Etsy shop is not gonna go live until the second video goes up. So be on the lookout for the second video if you wanna see what ends up in the Etsy shop. As I was going through the footage, I realized that I had way too much material to possibly reasonably fit in one YouTube video. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and sign off for now. I will see you next time for part two of this video. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you then. Next time I will probably be sitting in this exact position because I will not have gotten up because how could you possibly get up when this is happening to you?